Hey sewers, welcome back to Sewing with Sin. I today I'm gonna be working again on the envelope dress by Chris Wood Sews. Um, you will notice that on my YouTube channel I already have this tutorial. Um, but the reason why I'm doing it again is because when I did this the first time, I made a pretty big mistake on the neckline. So I wanted to make a tutorial um, that fixes that error. And also, um, I'm gonna make a shoulder adjustment. So I wanted to show that shoulder adjustment. And one more thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna add pockets. So I thought I'll make another one. Um, I'm not probably, I'm probably not gonna go through every single detail like I did in the first tutorial. So if you feel like I'm moving a little too fast for you in this one, go back to the first um, tutorial that I did for the envelope dress. So um, some things that you're gonna need are um, described right here on page four. You need um, two pieces of fabric and one of those fabrics is gonna be cut right in half. And the first piece of fabric is gonna be 27 and a half inches wide. And um, something that you really have to pay attention to is that the selvage is gonna be on the top and the bottom. So this piece right here for me, I'm cutting it according to her um, one size fits all, but she also has some really great directions if the one size fits all doesn't fit you and you need to size up or size down. Um, because I've already ma made it, I know that it fits me just right, so I'm just gonna keep it as is. But here's what the selvage looks like on my fabric. Um, this selvage is the part that hasn't been cut when you get it out of store. This is the part that has been cut. So the selvage is on the top and the selvage is on the bottom. Here's what it looks like on the bottom of my fabric. So I cut already this piece in half. So this is the 27.5 front two panels. They're both cut in half, so I have that ready. And then the back panel is 26.5 inches wide. And again, the selvage is on the top and the selvage is on the bottom. So I have those pieces ready. And I have, um, I cut out my own little, I mean, you can just make your own little pocket pattern. Here's what mine looks like. And then I cut um, just a contrasting fabric to, to put the pockets in. Um, and then as I'm sewing, I also, you'll need obviously some thread. I'm gonna use some contrasting color thread. And um, let's get to it. I'm gonna move on to the first step. Okay, step 1B, so step 1A was to cut all your fabric, so you should have already done that by now. Um, and then step 1B looks like this. And um, you're going to zigzag stitch the top end of the selvage and all of the sides. Um, what was I gonna say about zigzagging? Oh, I have um, a tutorial uh, specifically on zigzagging, just in case you're a really beginner sewer and you're not sure exactly where to place the fabric when you're sewing, um, go back and watch that tutorial if you need it. But I'm gonna go ahead and blow through these steps pretty quickly. Um, and I'm gonna zigzag and um, get the edges ready for the next step. I thought I'd just show really quickly how I'm zigzagging. So um, the purpose of zigzagging is to close off all of these open seams so it doesn't start to fray later on. Um, and I've set my needle down um, and this line that's right here in between the foot, the sewing foot, is pretty close to the edge of my fabric. So while I'm zigzagging, It's going to close off the edge so you could see that over here it's closing it all off i'll do just a tiny bit more and that's what that should look like so it's closing off the seam so later on it doesn't fray when you wash it so do that for all of your open edges after you finished zigzagging all of your open seams, you should be on step two, and you're gonna sew um, those two front panels together. So I have my two front panels together, and it says right sides are facing. So this is my right side, and this is my right side. 
Um, actually, for my fabric, it doesn't matter. This could have been the right side too because it's the same, um, it's a solid color. But for you, if you have a pattern, the pattern should be on the inside and this is the outside right now. So it's inside out. And she says, um, measure three fourth from the top. So I've already measured three fourth from the top and I've marked it. And then measure 13 inches from that mark. For me though, I'm gonna go down 14 inches. I'm going to make this neckline a little bit longer because I'm gonna do a shoulder adjustment up here. And when I do the shoulder adjustment, it's gonna slightly shift um, this neckline back to the back of my body and I wanna make sure that it's still long enough in the front. So if you're doing any kind of shoulder adjustment like I am, just take that into consideration that your neckline is also gonna move up and back. So here are my two spots that I've marked. That's 14 inches for me and that's the 3 fourth mark. And then you're gonna sew it at um, one half inch seam allowance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew from here to here half inch seam allowance, allowance, a straight stitch. And then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna leave all of this open and I'm gonna start right here and sew down at half inch seam allowance all the way down straight stitch. So I'm gonna go move over to the machine to get that done. So for me, half inch seam allowance is right here where that circle is. Um, and then I double checked up here to make sure that my stitch goes back to straight stitch because we were just working in zigzag, so always double check that. So I'm gonna um, first back stitch, forward stitch, and then back stitch one just to lock it in place. And then I'm gonna go down to that mark right there. Maybe one more. And then I'm gonna back stitch one more time. And I'm going to take it out and I'm going to work past the neckline. So I'm just trimming my thread. That's what it should look like. Um, and then you're going to move down those 13 inches, or for me it was 14 inches down. And I'm going to make sure that I'm at the half inch mark. Um, and as I'm sewing, the whole time I'm tracking to make sure that my fabric stays at half an inch the whole time. Okay, so I've lined it up to where that mark is, put my needle down. Um, you could pin all of this, all of the fabric down. I didn't pin it because it's just one straight line, so I'm just holding it with my hand. <clears throat> That's not a half an inch look, how I accidentally scooted it over. So I'm just going to shift it over and make sure it's actually at half an inch now it is don't forget to back stitch and then sew that straight stitch and you're just going to sew it all the way down so i'll sew a little bit more so you can see what it looks like that's what that should look like so that's a half inch seam allowance and then when you're done with that, move it on, turn on your iron, get your iron heated up because we're gonna press these seams open like that afterwards. So I'm gonna finish this up. So here's what it should look like after you finish sewing those two panels together. You have a little top stitch right here at the top. Your neckline should be open. And then um, here's what it looks like right past the neckline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the top and I like to keep my uh, measuring stick handy at half inch seam allowance um, because as I'm ironing, I'm gonna fold over this neckline. Let me move it slightly so you can see a little bit better, hopefully. Okay, so um, I'm gonna fold open because you're gonna top stitch this in just a minute, so I wanna um, fold it open, make sure it's at half inch seam allowance, especially on this neck area because you didn't sew it. Um, so I like to just, you can't see it, I'm sorry. There you go. I'm gonna double check along the way that it's half inch seam allowance before I iron it. And then you're just gonna press from the top all the way to the bottom. 
I'm gonna do just this part and then show you what that looks like. And do the same thing for the right and left panels. This is gonna turn into your, your neckline. And then I'm going to shift it down just a little bit. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Don't worry, you don't have to watch me unless you want to. Maybe it's really soothing to watch someone iron. <laughs> okay, then I'm just finishing up this neckline right here and pressing both sides open at half inch seam allowance. And here's what it should look like. Okay, so I've ironed it flat. And each of these parts that I iron should be at half inch seam allowance all the way down. Okay, now I haven't pressed the whole dress. So you need to do that too. Fold it open, press that seam allowance open like this. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that now. Here's what the front looks like after you've finished pressing the back seam open. The front should look like this. Open right there and here's the end of my neckline and then um, I pressed it all the way down. Now the next step, this is still step two, it says you're going to top stitch three eighth from the seam on both sides, making sure to catch the seams at the neck opening. So top stitch means that I'm going to stick um, this piece of fabric into my machine just like this with the right side facing up. So usually a lot of times when you're sewing, you see this side when you're sewing, um, but top stitching means you tip, you stitch on the top. So three eighths of an inch is um, just under a half an inch. So it should be about there. And that's where your seam line is gonna go right on top. And the reason why she's saying three eighths of an inch because if you actually sew it three eighths of an inch, it will be right about there. And you're gonna end up sewing all of this stuff that could move around you're going to sew over that so that way it doesn't shift around and it holds flat and it looks pretty on the front so i'm going to go over to my sheet machine and get started okay so i have the right side of my fabric in and ready to go it's set at three eighths of an inch um one easy way to track that is the left side of your foot should always be right here along the edge so i'm gonna first back stitch or forward stitch then back stitch and I'm gonna hold it and make sure that this edge is always right here by the presser foot. And I like to take this part really slow because this is a stitch that everybody's gonna see because it's on the front of your dress. And here's what it will start to look like. So I'm using a contrasting color just so you could see a little bit of a different color and that's about three eighths of an inch. And I'm just gonna keep, and I'm on the opposite side, it looks like this. So it's, it caught this seam allowance and it's gonna hold it down. So just keep sewing like that all the way down. And then you're gonna do the same thing for, um, for this sign of the skirt for the less, I'm sorry, of the dress for the left side of the dress. So I'm gonna go down and finish this right side and then move on to the left side. Here is step three. It looks like that you're gonna lay your back and your front pieces together with right sides facing together and pin along the top and stitch that edge at a half inch seam allowance. So I have my back piece right here and this is my front piece. So um, this is the right side, the back side is facing the table and I'm gonna lay the back piece right on top 
make sure that you have whatever's the right side of your fabric is going to be facing here and then line them up pin along the edges and then once you're done pinning along the edges you're gonna um, bring that to the sewer the sewing machine at half inch seam allowance so i'm going to finish doing this and then i'll take it over to sew the seam allowance all right here's what the seam should look like this is the shoulder seam and here's what it looks like on the wrong side of the dress like that so your next step is to get your iron heat it up get it ready and you're going to press your seams towards the back of the dress so my front of the dress is right here i'm going to press the seams back both of the seams so i'm not i'm not opening them them up like i did when i was connecting the two front panels so both of those seams you're pushing to the back of the dress because then the next step is you're gonna flip it back over to the right side put it into the sewing machine and you're gonna top stitch it just like you top stitch that neck area the whole front panel um, you're gonna top stitch the shoulder seams so I in just a moment will show you that at the sewing machine Okay, now I'm bringing the back of my fabric. So this side is the back part of the dress and make sure that your seams are facing this way because you're gonna sew right here on top of them, 3 8 inch seam allowance. So the front of my dress is over here, the back of my dress is here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. Hopefully you could see that a little bit better. There we go. Okay, and remember when we were doing that seam for the front two panels, I was telling you that if you just line up your presser foot right against the seam, which for me is right here, that's about three-eighths of an inch. So as I'm sewing right here, it's going to catch this seam that's underneath here and um, hold it down that way it's not moving all over the place so don't forget to backstitch <laughs> i'm gonna sew just a little bit so you can see what it looks like on the top and on the bottom let's see can you see it yet not yet i'm gonna do a tiny bit more so i could bring it around Okay, here we go. Here's what the top stitch looks like. And here's what it looks like from the back side. So it caught that seam allowance. Um, and then you're just gonna do that all the way across the top of your shoulder seam. Okay, now I'm getting ready to do the shoulder adjustment. And the reason why I'm doing a shoulder adjustment you can kind of notice right now, if I pull, um, sorry, it's really tricky to show you, but this is the shoulder seam, right? And before I start working on these pockets and measure them down eight inches, I am gonna do a little bit of an adjustment because my, my neckline, um, there's just a lot of bunching right here. Do you see all this bunching? Um, it's not really supposed to do that and maybe it's just you know, it's just based on your body type So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it back a little bit at a time Even that just made a huge difference. Do you see how it just has a little bit of bunching now? Um, and that's okay with me or you can keep pulling your dress back keep pulling your dress back. That's probably the exact point that my um, neckline should be and my shoulders should be because now there's no wrinkling. But I personally kind of like a little bit of the bunching right here. So I'm gonna pull it forward just a little bit more. And I think that's the point that I want it at. Okay, so now um, once you get that point, then you're gonna mark where your shoulders, where your shoulder lies. So for me, it's, oh gosh, 
it's right about there. And you could see too that the back seam, I don't know how many inches that is, maybe about two to two to two and a half inches. So I'm gonna put my phone down and mark where this is because once I mark that, then I'm gonna bring it back to the table and show you what to do next. Okay, so I've put a little pin over here where my shoulder seam was. I took off the dress and pinned it. And then um, the next step is um, measuring down eight inches. Now, what you're gonna do if you're doing the adjustment like me is instead of laying the dress completely flat like this, so do you see how that shoulder seam should be like this if you were doing it per the directions, but um, I'm gonna make this adjustment and I'm also just gonna measure it because I'm curious to know. Um, it's about a two inch adjustment for me. So what would be smart is to write that down that for me, my shoulder is about two inch adjustment. So two inch shoulder. That just, and then I have notes here too in my sewing book. So I'll add that to my notes. That's always wise to do is write it down. I didn't write it down last time, so I had to do it all over again. Okay, now I'm gonna mark that two inch. So whatever yours was, just give it a little mark on both sides. I'm gonna do it on this side. Again, we're still fixing the shoulder. We're not working on the, the, um, the armholes yet. We're prepping to do the armholes. Okay, so then I measure down two inches and mark that. Okay, and now once I've marked that, um, then I'm going to take that point and the point on the other side. I need to move my camera because this is not a very good angle. Okay, that's better. I'm sorry. I'm still learning these camera angles. Okay, then I'm taking this point and I'm taking this point and I'm going to shift that to the top. And now this is like my new top. So I'm just going to check to make sure everything is flat down. Um, and you can kind of see, I hope you could see that the old seam for the shoulder, the one that we originally did, is way over here. Let me bring that in a little bit. Okay, it's down here. If you would fold it the way um, it's originally written in the pattern, this would be right here at the top. So that's what my adjustment looks like. And now um, you could press that, I suppose. I'm not gonna press it, um, but I am gonna just double check to make sure that is a two inch difference before I do anything with the armholes. Okay, and I'm also just gonna pin that in place for a minute to make sure it doesn't shift around. You don't have to do that. I'm just going to be extra cautious. Okay, and now you're going to measure eight inches down from that point for the pockets. So I'm measuring eight inches from my new top. And marking that spot, I have my old mark from if I didn't do an adjustment, so I'm gonna take that off. So I marked that spot. I'm gonna mark the spot on the other side. Same thing, measure down eight inches if you're using the one size fits all. And mark that spot on the other armhole. Okay, so now that's gonna be your armhole. And here's what the adjustment on the back looks like. So. My seam is 
a little bit further back to give me that front shoulder adjustment. I wish I could remember. I would totally credit her and if I can find her information on Instagram, I will post it in the link um, in the description of this video. But this is not something that I created. Um, someone on Instagram was kind enough to post this and um, and share it with the community. And then Chris Woods also reposted it. So if you're, um, if I can't find it, you can probably find it on Chris Woods' Instagram account. Um, but thanks to whoever this woman was, um, she gave us all a little hack, a little tip. And um, I will definitely give a shout out and credit to her when I find her information. I can't remember it off the top of my head right now. Oh my gosh, you know what I just realized I did? Um, good thing I caught this before I started sewing. I did all the adjustments, but I forgot to flip my dress inside out. So what I almost did was started sewing my side seams the wrong way. So this is the outside of the dress. This is the front, the right side. The wrong side is in here. So I'm going to flip everything inside out, do this all again. Make sure that if you're doing any kind of shoulder adjustment that you flip the dress inside out because once you start sewing, you're going to sew on the wrong side, not the right side. So I'm going to go back and fix that. Okay, y'all, I want to show you what I've set up in preparation for adding pockets. So I have the top pinned in place for that new um, shoulder adjustment that I made. And then I've also marked where my arms are going to be, the armholes. So I marked that down with eight inches and I add little clips where that spot was at. I haven't sewed anything yet. And then I've also pinned um, just a little bit of the way down. And the reason why I'm not pinning all the way down and sewing straight stitch all the way down is because I wanna add pockets. So this is my method to adding pockets. And I don't know, it might, there. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but this is kind of what's worked for me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew from Oh wait, backtrack, back wrap. Let's go back for a second. Um, I measured down, I tried this on and I measured down from the armhole um, to figure out where is my pocket gonna go. So what you'll probably have to do if you're adding pockets is just try it on and make sure that your hands fit in a really nice spot. So for me, from the armhole, I measured down I think it was 11 and a half inches. So for me, it's 11 and a half inches and I marked that spot. And I did the same on both sides. So if you are taller or shorter, obviously like your hand might fit better down here or up here. So you just kind of put the dress on and, and find where your hand should go and mark that spot and then measure it. So that's what I've done. Now, my next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew I think it's a half inch seam allowance. Um, yep, sewing a half inch seam allowance down. So I'm gonna sew a half inch seam allowance from the armhole down to, not to where this line is, cause I feel like that'll be really close and I'm gonna wanna open it to add the pocket. So I'm probably gonna sew just, um, here's that where the pocket's gonna go. So I'm gonna sew maybe just an inch before that, just to give myself room to add the pocket. So I'm gonna go to the machine and stop right there, right before the pocket is gonna be placed. All right, now that I've sewn, I have an armhole. Um, and you can now take out those pins that you might've placed if you did the shoulder adjustment like I did. So I'm taking out all those pins um, and your armhole should look like that. And then I have a straight stitch all the way down to just before I want my pocket to be. 
so you can see I stopped right about there and I have all that space. Okay, so check for all your pins before you flip it right side out. So right now I have it inside out. I'm gonna flip it. Now my wrong sides are facing. And here's what it should look like on the right side of the dress. Okay, so now you have a seam. I haven't ironed the seam yet, so it still looks a little messy. And I have all these stray pieces of thread that I wanna clip. Do that, because that will bother you later on. Okay, now, now that I am all over the place, hold on. Okay, woo, I'm having one of those days where everything just seems to be going wrong. I'm getting really annoyed with something that should not be very hard. Okay, but I took a breath, I'm back, here we go. Okay, so remember right now your dress is right side facing out, the wrong side is on the inside, and I already had marked that spot right there of where the pocket's going to go. So now I'm gonna make sure that uh, my pocket is the way that my hand's gonna go in. So my hand goes in the pocket like that. So this very tall point is gonna be at the top. And I'm just placing it and finding that little mark that I had made. And I'm gonna line that up with right side of your pocket facing right side of the fabric of your dress. Now, I know that you're looking at my pocket and you're like, well, how do I know what side is your right side and what side is not your right side? Because they're solid patterns. Again, for me, it doesn't really matter which one is the right side, but for you, it will if you have some kind of pattern on your fabric. So if I had a pattern, it would be on this side facing the right side of the dress. This is gonna be the wrong side. And what will happen, so I have it pinned right here. Let me give you a close-up. I have it pinned right along the edge. This is the wrong side of the dress. This is the right side of the dress. I have it pinned and it's facing inside my dress right now. It's facing towards the stomach area, okay? And then on the back side of the dress, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna flip it over to the back side and I'm gonna get my other pocket and make sure that it's gonna be facing the exact same way so that way when it closes, it closes nicely like that, right? Okay, so here's the back side of my dress. I'm gonna find wherever that mark was and make sure that I'm attaching the right side of the pocket to the right side of the dress. So in other tutorials, you'll hear the language right sides facing. Um, and I'm just gonna pin that just like I did on the front of the dress. I know it feels like everything is backwards right now. I remember the first time I added inseam pockets, it just felt inside out or that things were backwards, but it's all gonna come together and if you're like me and you're like, what's the next step? I really need to understand what you're doing. The next step would be, you're gonna iron it and press that seam in like that. And it's gonna go, it will eventually flip inside of the dress. So this will flip inside of the dress. Cause sometimes I need a visual too, especially I don't know, it's just like having one of those days, like I said. So it will look something like that and you'll put your hand in that pocket like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my machine and I'm gonna sew this down because there's no directions. For me, I know it's probably gonna, I should probably sew that down at about three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna do just a straight stitch along here just for the pocket and I'll show you that right now. All right, so I'm gonna get ready to sew my pocket down. 
again, my pocket is facing the right side of the fabric. Your right side of your pocket should be facing the right side. And I'm gonna sew it, I think I said about three eighths of an inch, right about there. Um, it's not an exact science unless you're following um, a pattern that tells you. Backstitch. Don't forget to take out your pins. Here is what the pocket should look like on the inside of the dress. Here's what it looks like on the outside. Now I'm over in my ironing space and I'm warming up my iron, getting ready to press these seams. So I'm gonna start with this seam first. You're just gonna fold out. So here's where the seam line is, right? You're gonna fold out the pocket and iron and press this. Same thing here, you're gonna fold it out. And, well, it makes sense if I just flip it over, but you're gonna iron and press this again. So when you're ironing it, that seam should be pointing out. When I'm ironing this, the seam should be pointing this way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and iron all of this down. And after you're finished ironing it, then you're gonna take it back to the sewing machine one more time to add a top stitch right here. We're doing a lot of top stitching and all of this just to make sure that the seam underneath here doesn't shift around, especially in your pocket. So I'm gonna sew pretty close to the edge of the seam and I'm gonna top stitch from here all the way down. Okay, here's what my top stitch looks like. And now for your side seams, remember how you already started the side seams? Here's the armhole. You already started the side seams here, sewed at half inch seam allowance. Now you're gonna pin down the rest of the dress and be careful that you're not pinning down this seam line anymore. Now you're gonna pin all the way around the pocket and down the rest of the seam. So I'm lining up my pockets and I'm gonna pin all the way around the pockets. And then matching them up, making sure that they're all matched. And now it's finally coming together. Hopefully you're able to visualize what we're doing because then you're gonna do the same exact thing for the opposite side. We just have one right now. Okay, and then you're gonna continue to add um, pins all the way down the rest of the dress. So now I'm getting towards the bottom of the dress and I'm just pinning that down and as I'm pinning I'm kind of thinking hmm am I gonna keep a um keep this this straight stitch all the way down to the bottom of the dress you could also do like a little split at the bottom where it opens up a tiny bit for your legs to move around more I've done that with one of my dresses I'm just not sure if I'm gonna do that with this one so as I'm adding my pins, I'm just thinking, if you're gonna do a split seam, so here are my two bottom seams, you um, would not sew that straight stitch all the way down. You'd sew it to probably about here or so, I don't know. It's really up to you how wide you would want that to be open. And then you would leave it open like that. And um, sometimes I add the split seam right here just so my legs can move a little bit more um, especially if I'm planning to wear this dress in my classroom. I'm a teacher. Um, it's kind of hard to sit 
crisscross if it's sewn all the way to the bottom. So um, if you're following the pattern, you're just gonna pin it all the way to the bottom and you're gonna straight stitch starting from wherever you left off. So I left off right here. I'm gonna straight stitch down here. I'm gonna show you on the machine too. Stop right here. And then sew all the way around the pocket and then continue on down. Okay, so I'm finding that spot where I stopped earlier. There it is. I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can see better. Um, and I'm going to back stitch at that spot. And keep sewing all the way down. And then make sure that your needle is all the way down because now you're going to lift your presser foot. Don't worry, everything is secure because the needle is holding the fabric. And now I'm gonna shift my fabric around to sew around the pocket. And as I'm sewing around the pocket, you could do it at a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna get closer to the edge because I want really big pockets, as big as they can be. So. I'm just sewing all the way around the edge of my pocket. to do for the very last step before you finish sewing down the dress. Ooh, I almost sewed over that pin. No big deal though. Okay, getting close. I'm going to remove this pin. Sew all the way up to this seam allowance that you had right here. And then put your needle down before you shift it. Okay, now I'm lifting my presser foot again and I'm going to turn the dress down, back down to the original spot it was in. Put my presser foot back down and continue sewing. Continue sewing that straight stitch all the way down the dress. I decided I am not going to do a split seam. I'm just gonna sew it down to the bottom. So do the same thing if that's what you're doing and you're following me. All right, now that you're finished sewing that seam all the way down around the pocket to the bottom of the dress, you're gonna come back to the top where the armholes are at. And I am on step, I'm getting ready for step five. So step five is getting ready to start sewing down the armholes. Um, but before I do step five, I want to um, press all of these seams. So I'm also just prepping the armhole as I'm pressing because you need to press the armhole too. So open up that armhole. I also, by the way, have my dress inside out right now. Okay. And then remember you had a half inch seam allowance down here by the armhole. So I'm also going to fold open this armhole with the half inch seam allowance. Or, I mean, you could do it slightly bigger or slightly smaller, but this is kind of what it should look like. I'm just getting really annoyed by all this thread. This linen that I'm using, I love it. It's super soft, but there's just like thread everywhere and it's really bothering me and getting in the way of making this video. Do you ever feel that way where just something really small like that annoys you? Oh, take a deep breath. Okay, so I'm gonna iron around and press this seam allowance down. Then once I press this down with my armhole, then I'm gonna continue to iron down all of this she says to press the seams open. So you're gonna iron it and press it. I guess I should probably show you because it is a little tricky. So first I'm gonna start with the armholes. 
I'm gonna make sure that they're about a half inch seam allowance. I am not gonna be picky about that right now because I'm just getting really tired. Um, and again, you have to do all these steps for the other side. We've only done one side so far. Okay, and then I'm folding down this side of the armhole about half inch seam allowance. Pressing it closed. Okay, now this part gets a little tricky because right now pressing open seams it's tricky if you don't want to accidentally crease all the rest of your dress. So I'm just making sure that things are opened up before I start pressing those seams open. And then I'm starting at the armhole, pushing the seam allowances all the way open. And then I'm going to press them open like so here we go pressing that open and you're gonna do that all the way down i'm just gonna do it with you i'm not gonna do this since um on my own right now because even though you're not really here with me i know you're gonna be watching this so this is helping me get through some frustration today Okay, so I'm still ironing, pressing those seams open, and here I am at the pocket. You obviously cannot press the seams open at the pocket, right? So what I'm gonna do is get my little scissors. Where are you at? Here you are, and I'm just gonna clip that spot right before the pocket. Don't clip too far that you go into the seam that you just sewed. Okay, so I clipped and that way, so here's the seam allowance. Can you see it? I hope you can. I clipped it right here. And now the pocket is free to move around because in a moment I'm gonna come back to the pocket. Do the same thing with the bottom of the pocket. Clip it very close to the pocket um, and don't cut into the seam. That straight stitch you're obviously clipping into the zigzag stitch and then just continue pressing open the rest of this seam and then I'll come back to the pocket to show you how to press that next all right I finished ironing I flipped my dress right now with insides are in facing in and I have the right side facing out as you could tell by the pocket so remember how we didn't iron down that pocket. I'm just gonna press down the seams from the right side of the dress. So I'm pressing down that pocket really good on one side and then I'm gonna open it up and press it really good on the other side. I like to press the pockets down pretty good because you don't want them just shifting wherever they want. Okay, so here is what it looks like. Let's move over here for a second. So this is the right side of the dress. Here's the neckline. Here's what the armhole's gonna look like. Remember how we already ironed that down? The next step is gonna be, we're just gonna sew that seam all the way around that step five that's coming up in a moment okay and then here's what the side seam looks like here's what your pocket should look like oh i just want to feel the full effect feels good oops i realized when i iron right here there's like a little crease so i'm going to go back and fix that okay now you're going to want to do all of these steps for this side of the dress so this side of the dress right now still only has a seam up into the pocket, right? Now you're gonna go back and do all those steps for this. And then I'll be back to do the armhole. So that will be the next step. And you're getting close to being done. All right, you should be on the home stretch. Did you finish the other side? Or maybe you're just doing your armhole first and then going to the other side. So I just removed this 
um, because I want to have enough space right here for my armhole. Uh, my neighbors are randomly blasting off fireworks. This always happens in my neighborhood. Just randomly someone decides to throw a firework in the middle of the night. <laughs> okay, and now I am first putting in my armhole at the base of the arm where your underarm arm is at. And this is what she explains in step five too. Okay, and then I am trying to scoot this over. Scoot it over. And I'm gonna make sure that this hole right here for my foot presser is just slightly below that armhole. Okay, and I'm just gonna bring over her directions for a minute just to double check. So she's telling you to start right here and you're gonna sew down all of that folded edge that's on the inside over here. You're gonna sew that down at 3 8 seam allowance. So I need to scoot this in more because that is not 3 8 That's closer to 3 8 And you're gonna sew, I like to sew back and forth about two times right here just because I wanna make sure that the seam is not gonna open the underarm. So I'm gonna sew a tiny line. Then I'm gonna go back, do that one more time. Okay, then you're gonna put your needle down. Remember we did this step when we were sewing the pockets? Lift your foot presser up. And just make sure everything is flat. And put that foot presser back down. Make sure you're still at about 3 8 seam allowance. I am. Because what you're trying to do right now is you're sewing down this and you don't want to accidentally sew way over here because then you're going to miss the seam allowance. So here I am. Then I just like to check on the opposite side. Oh, perfect. It's sewing it down. Okay, so actually my foot presser is like more like right on the edge of my fabric. And here's what it should look like. Here's what it looks like on the opposite side. You could probably cl be closer to 3 8 seam allowance. I am not. I'm more at like a fourth seam allowance and at this point I'm just going to keep going here because um, I don't want to have a um, lopsided seam allowance. So I'm just going to keep going where I'm at now. Checking along the way to make sure I'm catching that seam. I'm all good. I think. running out of thread. Don't you hate it when that happens? You're like right in the middle of a project and this thread is important because it's like a contrasting color. So man, I got no mistakes allowed. <laughs> and I'm gonna sew right up to this line right here. Back stitch. And lift your presser foot and here's what it should look like. Here's what it looks like on the inside. Probably could have gotten closer to that seam, but that's okay. I am okay with everything not being super perfect. Okay, now you're gonna do that armhole on the other arm. And your last step is just hemming up the bottom. Okay, so I finished both of my side seams. Here's what it looks like now with my inseam pocket. Um, and I kind of like that the color slightly pops too. Um, 
And then the armholes are finished. And the neckline is just the right size for me. Remember we did the adjustment right here. I have a little bit of bunching, but I don't mind that. And then the very last step is the hem on the bottom. So for the hem, um, she gives some really great directions right here. What I did was I tried on my dress um, and that's what she recommends. You try on your dress to see if this is the length that you want it. For me, it was just a little too long. I want it to stay long because it's um, almost the fall and I still want to wear this dress. So I'm going to keep it pretty long. Um, and then I marked it right here. So when I tried it on, I just kind of folded it up a little and pinned it. And I know that this is the length that I want it to be. But when you hem it, you're going to need um, to mark an inch and trim off the excess fabric. So for me, um, this is an inch. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to mark right here and I'm going to mark an inch at several places around the dress and then I'm going to trim off that excess fabric and then I can be ready to hem this. If you need more help with hemming, I, um, I have a tutorial in my YouTube channel so look for that if you need more support with this. Um, I'm not really going to spend too much time. I will just show you what my hem looks like um, when I'm finished. But if you need more help, then find that tutorial. I think it's called All About Hemming.